What makes a guy choose you over another woman? We're going to be exploring that today. Now, before we get into that, I want to address something with you all with respects to the advice you'll hear about this from most dating coaches, dating advice out there. And they'll often talk about what a woman is doing wrong to push away another man. And I'm just not a big proponent of um, that particular narrative as if they're going to choose you for another woman because you're doing something wrong or you need to be doing something better and you need to follow my five techniques so you can attract the man of your dreams. And oftentimes there's a sales pitch associated with that. We're going to explore this conversation more from a spiritual perspective. What I mean by spiritual perspective is not the tradition-based way of attraction and men are provider protectors and women are nurturers from that perspective. We're going to look at it from the heart-centered perspective. You know, it's interesting. Many of you know that my father recently passed away. My 98 uh, and three, four fifths year old father, uh, just passed away. And he basically had one woman in his life. In fact, my mother had only one man in her life. This was from an era in both of them born in the 1920s. Certainly that was a different period in our evolution of human dating, mating, or relating. In fact, I don't believe my mother dated more than one man. I don't think she ever went on a date with another man in her life. She basically only had one man in her life. And my father had one woman. And back then when we met, it was oftentimes we were limited to those people that were right in front of us. In fact, my parents met at a officer's ball, a cotillion, if you will. And today we are in a completely different environment. And we oftentimes have many people to choose from, or at least perception that we have many people to choose from because of our little devices and swiping and dating apps and that sort of thing. We, what make, So we have all these options. What makes a man choose you over another woman? What makes, why, why is he going to choose you? And I think when you get to the understanding of what I'm about to share in just a few minutes, you'll understand how his, the way he processes who he'll choose comes from a different perspective than you. All you have to do is wear a red dress and wear a red lipstick to get, get, grab his attention and he's going to choose you over another person. You know, I, I have a quote that says, soulmates come into our lives to teach us lessons and our true love goes to school with us each and every day holding hands. Now, why I bring that up is I think many of us who have had more than one relationship, like my mother and father. Oh, by the way, if I didn't say this, my father Reese just passed away a few days ago. And I appreciate all the condolences from many of you. So thank you so much. But coming back to these experiences, many of us have had multiple relationships, whether they last a couple dates whether they last a couple weeks, whether they last a couple months, or whether they last a couple years. Every time we interact with another human being, and let's just use you've been physically intimate with them as the, as the barometer for being in a relationship with them, and that can include a one-night stand. Okay, why I'm bringing this up is I have observed that the average person today has had somewhere between five and 10 relationships in their lifetime, particularly for those of us in midlife. And I always say midlife is after baby making years and before retirement. And I think the reason why I put 60 year olds in that category is because I have a father that lived to be 98 and four fifths. So certainly a 60 year old was midlife to someone like my father. Anyway. Um, so think about it, five to 10 relationships. Well, let's just assume if you've had say six of those relationships and you're still single right now, why did you have those relationships? Well, going back to my quote, soulmates come into our lives to teach us a lesson. I think we're all here to experience some sort of lesson, some sort of understanding about ourselves through this relationship experience. So if, if every relationship in our life comes to us for a lesson, okay, then why he might choose you over another person is it might be the next evolution of lesson. And let me also say, 
that from a spiritual perspective, you're either his lesson or he's either your lesson. I quite frankly think you're both there for each other for a lesson. Those are the relationships that don't work out. So a lot of times you hear the narrative, it was the right time. It was the right time. It was their timing. And what I think about that, you know, in other words, you know, it wasn't the right time for our relationship and that it might happen in the future. I don't look at that. I look from that vantage point. I look at it from the perspective as timing is merely, merely the next evolution that is upon us for the lesson we are meant to experience in our life. Now, let's look at, okay, let's examine lesson. Well, let's say one of your lessons was to have better communication skills. So you had a contentious relationship with another person. And that was designed to help you communicate your thoughts, your feelings in a way that could be seen, heard, and understood. That's if you go in with the consciousness of recognizing that relationships are actually lessons in our lives. And true, genuine love with a partner is that person that you're going to be holding hands together going forward in a level of partnership. See the, see the difference? Because I'm going to share with you, many, many human beings experience love from an unhealthy container known as love attachment style. And let me clarify that for a second. So there's an amazing book called Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. I highly recommend reading this. Why I'm bringing this up. When I said unhealthy, okay, if so there's three primary love attachment styles. There's anxious, avoidant, and secure. And there's sub-attachment styles within that. A secure attachment to another human being comes from a genuinely healthy place. It doesn't come from a um, unhealthy place. And what I mean by unhealthy place is unresolved childhood wounds and traumas that cause us to choose partners from a place of need, from a place of, of need. And what I mean by need, I mean a place where you're not loving yourself. So we, I've, I've often said this in my videos, I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. So needing someone else to love you so you can feel good about yourself is an unhealthy need. So what I've observed is many people are dating, mating, or relating in a container of either using another person, spending time with another person versus growing and building with another person. And here's a new chart to share with everyone. It's called my three people are actively dating. And by the way, in the top, you, by the way, you can see that this is merely not a fact. It's merely an opinion, but you see the percentages. So I believe 20% of the population are users. They seek short-term game, love bombers, players, gold diggers, entitled people. And then in the middle are spenders, roughly 60%. What a spender means is they want to spend time with you. They seek companionship, connection, and sex, but they lack direction. They're uncertain. They usually have a dysfunctional life, and they treat you as actually a placeholder. And then the, the third and final category is a grower builder. These are people that have their act together. They genuinely seek partnership with another human being. They're evaluating you. They're vetting you to see if you'd actually make a good partner. In fact, it's interesting. I have a brand new client who shared with me that how she came to me was through the man she's dating who's been watching my channel. He's watching my channel and he vetted her. So he used every, by the way, since my channel is mostly uh, talking to women about men, I'm very flattered that he in fact, I think more men should be watching my channel. Please refer this video to male, to your male friends. But she, he vetted her. And then he introduced her to my videos. And she, they're like, they're joining up together in relationship. Because they're actually evaluating each other, not from that fantasy-based, you know, love and limerence and, or excuse me, lust and limerence, but from a real place of, are we compatible with one another? So let's just say you're currently not in a relationship, okay? So if I said relationships come into our lives to teach us a lesson, 
And quite frankly, there's a healing that can happen through a relationship. What about when we're not in relationship? I think that's another evolution of healing that happens for us. And what I mean to say is for those individuals that do genuine introspective work, they do self they do personal development, self-help and spiritual work to actually kind of identify in their past relationships, what could I have improved upon within myself, particularly in the area of, of of communication skills and conflict resolution, but more importantly, loving them on myself. And many of you know, I wrote a book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book. See, when we're not in relationship, that is the time to really dive into genuinely loving yourself and actually knowing thyself. I did a blog recently centered around know thyself, understand, understand your strengths, understand your weaknesses, understand your foibles, understand that you know improving communication skills is a necessity for a healthy, happy relationship. And, many, and most everybody thinks they are the exception and not the rule. And I'm here to say most everybody is the rule. We all can improve upon ourselves. This is why I'm a big proponent of doing meditation, doing physical exercise to improve our bodies when we're not in relationship. Certainly do those while you're in relationship as well. And deep dive into healing childhood wounds and adult trauma so you can be better prepared to be the woman he will choose. And hopefully he's done this work as well, just like the man who's been following my channel. And by the way, if you need some help in vetting, that's my whole area of expertise. You see this link right here to jonathanasley.com forward slash coaching. And there's a link below to get a cop or to, to connect with me. My whole area of expertise is to teach you to get clear on who's the right person for you and teach you the questions you should be asking based on your personality to determine if he's right for you. Folks, I, I threw out my back about five months ago. And during that time, I needed to heal, to rest my back. This is what the space that when you're not in relationship, you're doing a healing. When you're in relationship, you're doing a healing. And I recognize that, you know, this might be a little bit nebulous to some degree, but many of you understand what I mean. Because when we when we are really in a place of knowing ourselves, as I said before, we can be better prepared for the type of relationship we want. So what's going to make a man choose you over another person? Well, I shared it with you in the Grower Builder. He's ready for commitment. He's ready to commit. He clearly knows he wants a life partner. When a person knows this before they ever meet somebody, they operate completely different when it comes to choosing someone. They do it from a pragmatic perspective. They do it from an intentional perspective. And while certainly they do it from a, you know, attraction-based perspective, I mean, let's face it, we are driven by our biology to want to pursue someone from the physical sense. But a person who's ready to choose they're not going to buy into the lust or limerence to be swayed by lust or limerence. They actually are looking for somebody that can fit into their life like this. They're actually approaching it from, do we share the same values? Do we have a shared vision of what our future is going to be like? Can our lifestyles blend with one another? And most importantly, does this person have the emotional maturity to navigate the challenges that we face in relationship? Did you hear me say that? The emotional maturity. It's fascinating to me. Most people that can pay their bills on time and be responsible, they, we, they believe that that's maturity. I'm talking about emotional maturity, that ability to regulate our emotions when we're faced with challenges in the relationship. You know, many people, many men and women get very defensive when there's friction in a relationship. They can actually act in a place of criticism. They can have contempt or worse, they stonewall, meaning they take lots of space because they're afraid to actually deal with the problem at hand. When an emotionally mature person shows up, 
being ready for commitment and being able to lean into the difficulties that will happen in relationship. That's a man ready to choose. And so if you happen to be the person next in his vortex that there's attraction with, that you share the same values with one another, you have a shared vision of what your life would be like. You have lifestyles that are blendable. When that emotionally mature person meets that, that's when they're going to choose you over that woman who doesn't meet that space. I know many of you are going to say, Jonathan, where are these emotionally mature men? You know, folks, most men are good guys. They're just bad daters. And yes, there is work that needs to be done. I'm a big advocate. I'm a wake-up call for individuals, both men and women alike. But let me just say this, for as many men as you believe don't do the work, there's just equally as many women that don't do the individual work. So ask yourself, if you're doing the work, then where are the kind of men who also do the work? Are they at workshops? Are they, um, where, where do these people spend time? People that do individual work, introspective work, actually go to workshops. And those are great places to meet people to create a group within your circle of friends and invite people to join in. Just like this man I shared with you who followed my channel and he invited the woman in. Maybe they're following podcasts like Lewis Howes or, or Chris Williamson or James Shetty. There are plenty of people out there that are thirsty for individual growth. So don't discount that these men aren't available or avail or out there. They are out there. You just have to do a little bit of digging because the man who's done the work and who's ready to commit, that person that meets him in that space of attraction, values, lifestyles, and emotional maturity, that's when he's going to choose you over another woman. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know if it is. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post a comment below. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well. Okay, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrett of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.